Hi, this is William. So if you're watching this, you're probably one of my students who needs to conduct some analyses and create some figures using R and R Studio. Um, before I get started with the installation process, I want to mention something. I've already previously downloaded two files that we're going to use in R Studio, um, and when I downloaded them, initially this showed up as homework.rmd. Dot web archive. Um, you want to make sure that it's an RMD file so that way R Studio and R will know how to deal with it. Similarly, I downloaded this comma separated value file and it appended .txt for text um, to it. So you want to make sure that you rename them to get rid of the .web archives or the .txt. Um, sorry about that, I didn't realize that that was something that happened in Max. So anyway, let's open up uh, Safari, and there's my website, but we don't need me, we need R. So let's go and Google R, and here it is, our very first link. We want to download it, so let's click on this, and this takes us to a list of mirrors. Mirrors are just um, a bunch of web servers that have the same information and programs on them, and it's useful to find a mirror that's near you. I'm currently in Oregon, so I'm going to choose this mirror. By using that mirror, I should be able to download it a little bit faster. Since I'm on a Mac, I want to download R for Mac, so let's do it, and I'm going to get the first package here. So this will take a couple um, minutes to download, and while we are downloading R, let's go and get R Studio. So let's Google R Studio, and here we want to download R Studio, and we are using a Mac, so let's select Mac. Okay, now we're waiting on our download, so let's open these things up. So it looks like we've got a little bit of time. Now R is going to be the workhorse. It's going to do all the heavy lifting for us. It's going to run the analyses, um, but we're also installing R Studio because R Studio makes working in R so much more pleasant than working in R by itself. R Studio does fancy things like code completion, so if you're typing in a command, it can auto-complete that command for you, which will save you time and effort, um, and also save you a lot of frustration, because if you make a, a simple spelling mistake and insert um, you know, change one letter, your commands probably aren't going to work or you're not going to get the same type of functionality that you believe it would. So I'm going to pause this just for a second while um, we're waiting for these to download and then we'll come back. Okay, the downloads are complete, so let's go ahead and install R first. We should do this first because R Studio is going to need R there. So let's continue, select all of the defaults, agree, install for all users, continue, install, and we are probably going to be asked for a password, so let me pause this recording for a moment. Okay, so we're back. Um, my friend entered her password, and before I could even restart the recording, the installation had finished. So this is exactly what we want to see. Now let's go and install our studio. And here we go. Here's our link to our studio. So let's open up our studio. And once this opens up, we will open up an example file that is ever so cleverly named example. So it's opening, it's thinking, and this is exactly what you're going to see the very first time that you open up our studio. Once you start working in our studio, you'll probably see something else. This is the console. This is where R lives. Um, R, you can do simple calculations with one of the most powerful uh, calculators in the world, but we're going to use it for much more complex things than that. So let's open a file. So let's go to File, Open File, and I've got something on the desktop for me. Homework.rmd. Boom, here it is. An RMD file is just, um, oh, this is homework.rmd, not the example.rmd. Hold on one second. I need to get the example.rmd. So github.com slash knapsite, capstone reproducibility. And you'll see what I mean with the whole web archive here. So I want to get the example. I'm going to get the raw file, download link file as, example.rmd, let's save, let's go to the desktop and make sure it didn't mess up. Yes, look at this, dot text, curse you. So let's get rid of this dot text here quickly. Boom, 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 boom. 
Ah, yes, we want to use RMD. Thank you very much. So let's open this up. Hopefully it will be smart enough to open in our studio. Yes, open. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Maybe I need to do that. Or maybe not. Let's try to just drag it right in. Or do file, open file, open. Can you tell I don't use Macs very often? Example. Ah, oh, good. Here it is. Example.rmd. RMD stands for R Markdown. Um, basically, it's just a plain text file. Um, it's showing up with different colors because our studio knows that when I do certain things, like use a pound sign here, that that means I want to make this a title. When I use this weird construction here and here, that means this is going to be a comment. Um, in addition to titles and comments, we can uh, make some things italics and bold. We can also describe what we're going to be doing and then actually include our commands inside of R code chunks. So this right here is an R code chunk and you can insert chunks simply by going up to chunks and insert chunk. That's all there is to it. I'm going to delete that. Whoops! I just did something bad. Notice how the chunk begins with these three tick marks. Tick, tick, tick and then brackets are brackets and it ended with another tick, tick, tick. If you don't have exactly this at the beginning of a chunk and exactly that at the end of a chunk things aren't going to run as you expect. You need to be very conscientious when you're using R. You need to be careful with your spelling and your punctuation. Um, so let's see if we can process this file. Let's go up to here, knit HTML. And when we try to knit this for the first time, it's probably not going to work. So you can see it's thinking. Install required packages. Yes, we want to install those packages. And it will do this and, and take a minute or two while it's processing. Let me explain what happens during the knitting process. So it takes all of this plain text and it will output um, what we've selected. It will output basically a website that will hide our comments, that will keep our explanations, that will show us our code inside of a, a block to itself. So it'll be a code chunk, literally. And it will also show us the output. Notice it also has prompted us to install some other things. So let's install this, yes. Agree. Continue on battery power. <laughs> Hopefully this will last just a little bit longer. And while it's downloading the software, notice here, line 125, error in library, dplyr. So we weren't able to knit the file appropriately. Let's take a look at what is in line 125. I'm trying to scroll down. And line 125, library dplyr. dplyr is a library or a package and it contains functions and things that we can use to make analyzing our data or organizing our data easier. But we can't use any libraries or packages until we've installed them. Notice we're going to need the dplyr library, also the ggplot2 library, and a couple others. So let's install them. To do that, I'm going to go back into the console and type install packages. Install pack. Oh my goodness, look at that. It figured out what I wanted to do before I had finished typing it in. So when you see this, you can just hit enter and it will auto-complete the function for you and stop you from making an error. Also notice that it gave us an open and closed paren. This is great because we want every open parenthesis to end with an, a closed parenthesis. Same thing with quotes. I want to quote the package name. I only type double quote once, but it put in the second one. This is great. So dplyr. This will take a minute to install. All right, so I believe this, oh, it's still working on downloading that software. Hopefully this will go fairly quickly. A cool thing that we can do also R keeps track of the things that you've done inside of it. So instead of typing in install packages and using autocomplete again, all I'm going to do is hit the up arrow here. So up arrow, I need to click back into it, sorry, up arrow, and look, it gave us the previous command. We can use the up and down arrows to navigate through our previous command. So if we use one command regularly, it will, um, allow us to make simple edits quickly. So we're also going to install ggplot2. 
And let's do something here. Let's get rid of that S just to see how anal R is. Oh, I couldn't find that function. So let's use the up arrow again and change this to the correct name. And it's installing ggplot2. Once this is finished, we are going to install the tidier package. That's T-I-D-Y-R. Hopefully this should be fairly quick. Let's see if the other thing is finished installing yet. No, it's still downloading. All right, but we can install tidier now. T-I-D-Y-R. This should go fairly quickly. And finally, we're going to install gplots. Groovy. Well, while we're downloading the software, let me show you some ways that you can um, run data and go through the code uh, that's inside these RMD files so you can better understand what's going on. So let's go to the first place where I have a code chunk right here. To run a piece of code, there are a number of things we can do. We can copy it, control C or command C, I suppose, and then command paste but I'm working on a Mac and I have a Windows keyboard, so that's not good. So copy and paste and then hit enter. Ah, uh, error. It couldn't find the file or directory. Well, I know that there's a file here because if we look at the desktop, you'll see that I have the example.rmd and politics.csv. So if we go back to this, look, I'm trying to read this comma separated value file called politics.csv, but R doesn't know where it is. So we're going to tell R for the duration of this session or until we change it, we want to use the working directory where this source file, the example.rmd, is located. So it's always a good idea to have the RMD files that you're going to be using with a particular data set inside the same directory or folder as that data set, so this will be easy. So we just tried and copied and pasted. That's a pain in the butt. Let me show you a much better way. I'm going to hit Command, Enter, and look at that. It automatically copied, pasted, and ran the function all by itself. Notice, as soon as I did that, it returned us to this um, little arrow symbol, which means that R is ready to accept more input. You'll also notice that polls showed up here. It says that polls is uh, an object that has 132 observations of seven variables. So we know that it worked. I also want to show you a couple other ways of um, running code. So let's run the next little bit of code here. So I'm in the next code chunk, and I'm going to click Run. So again, it copied and pasted what was in that chunk, str, that stands for structure. So we want to see the structure of the polls variable. And this tells us that polls is a data frame. Like up here, it has 132 observations of seven variables. And we can see the seven variables, subject, party, test time. We can see the different types of variables that we have. So notice that subject is an integer right now. And party is a factor. Um, if we have multiple lines that we want to run at one time, let's say this these next two, um, we can't just put our cursor anywhere in the line and run that because that will only run the one line. So if we want to run multiple lines, we should highlight and then use command enter or um, the run thing. So yes, the software was installed, done. So notice I did something here, polls subject and then I use this funny thing right here, which means take everything that's on this side and assign it to this variable. We did this up above. So when we first ran this, we said, read this data set and take all the data and put it in this variable called polls. Down here, we changed, sorry, I'm not used to scrolling in Max. Um, I'll just do that right here. So right here, we're saying we're going to take the poll subject, we're going to do this factor function to it and assign the results of this back to poll subject. So let's see how poll subject has changed. We're going to do str and then polls. Uh-oh, polls not found. Notice I use two L's. You have to be careful. Let's try it with a capital P. No, it's not working. We have to be really careful and precise when we're typing things in. Notice how subject, which used to be an integer, is now a factor. Now that we've installed the libraries and the rest of the things have been installed, we should be able to knit this as a website. So let's try. So it's knitting. It's taking 
our explanations, combining them with our code, and producing the output. So look, we have this beautiful title that we created by using that pound sign. It has my explanation. Those comments, they're not visible. It shows our code that was in a code chunk in its own chunk. When we asked it to do something that produced output, it shows us exactly what that output is. When I grade your homework, I will take your RMD files and I will try to knit them. So you should make sure that you can knit your file because if I can't knit your file the first time I hit knit, you're going to lose points. You should also use stir a lot. Anytime you do something, use stir to make sure that the data are looking the way that you expect them to look. And if you're not getting um, things to work correctly, Use the um, feedback that you're getting from mistakes. So like we saw here, um, the object polls isn't found. We can look up here and see, aha, it's not a capital P polls, it's a small p polls. So use the errors that you get to try to figure out um, what you need to do to fix things. Play around with the data, change things, see what happens, have fun. Have as much fun as you can, and, and hopefully you'll learn a lot. And if you have questions, something doesn't work, then that's a great time to contact me. Have a good one.